Oh boy, do I love watching my grandkids enjoy the benefits of managed democracy. Grandfather, grandfather, look what I found in the woods over there. Oh, oh dear, Jimmy, that's a neat toy you've got there. Could, could grandfather see that real quick? Uh, sure, grandfather. What, what is it? Well, little Jimmy, do you remember why I told you not to play in the woods? Of course, grandfather. How could I forget? <clears throat> you should never go in the woods around grandfather's house because he is a deeply flawed individual who irresponsibly leaves military-grade weapons in large piles where children could easily access them. And now, Jimmy, what did you go do? I went in the woods around Grandfather's house, where he irresponsibly leaves large piles of military-grade weapons. It's okay, little Jimmy. Everyone makes mistakes, especially your grandfather. But you know what? I think you're old enough. It's about time I tell you what this here is. Really? Do you mean that, Grandfather? Yes, Jimmy, I do. This here is a railgun. I used it back in my days as a Helldiver. And matter of fact, before I joined the Helldivers, I was part of the group that developed this weapon. Oh boy! Grandfather, could you tell us about the exact engineering and mathematics that goes into making this weapon? Well, that's a very specific request out of you, little Jimmy, but you know what? Absolutely. Back in my younger days, as a CIF R&D research student, I helped to design the railgun here. And today, I'm going to tell you about the storied history of the railgun in Helldivers 1 and 2, as well as take a look at the math and see if it'd be possible for humanity, using today's technology, to build a weapon such as this. But first, a quick message from the Bears. Brothers, sisters, gather to me, gather to me here today with what we have found in these woods. This pile of railguns here that the Helldivers so irresponsibly left, possibly for children to have easy access to. We will take this planet back. The Helldivers will no longer subjugate us and steal our children. Today, we are no longer servants of man. The Ursine Revolt begins here. If you've used the railgun in Helldivers 2, you understand why it's a fan favorite. They may have nerfed it, just a teensy weensy little bit, maybe a teensy weensy little bit too much, but it still slaps. But did you know that the railgun was also a fan favorite in Helldivers 1? In Helldivers 1, it was called the RX-1 railgun. So the Helldivers 1 railgun differed in some significant ways from our current railgun. In Helldivers 1, the RX-1 used a magazine system that had five rounds in each magazine, compared to our current railgun that's more of a break action where you shove one in every time. Overall, the railgun from Helldivers 1 fulfilled generally the same role as our current railgun, deal lots of damage to high health enemies. It wasn't quite as devastating as the current railgun because it had a rate of fire of about one round per second compared to the current one, which takes a lot longer to reload and charge up. So it didn't do quite as much damage, but it still absolutely slapped. Now, one very interesting feature that the railgun from Helldivers 1 had was stun rounds. And I think this would be awesome if maybe they made a variant of the railgun in Helldivers 2. Because these stun rounds could do like EMS weapons currently do to targets immobilizes them and makes them easier to hit. If this railgun could do high damage to one enemy and EMS the enemies around it, ooh, I think that would be an awesome gun to add to Helldivers 2. If you're listening, developers, there's a variant you could work on. I'd love to have it. But I think it's time we move on to our Helldivers 2 railgun here. It needs no introduction if you play the game. The RS-422 slaps. Early on in the game, people were using this thing to one-shot chargers, just knock out Bile Titans. This thing was awesome. Now, they did change it a little bit because, as the developer said, it was a little too easy to use on safe mode only and still do the insane damage, so they increased that high armor penetrating to only happen when you use it on the unsafe mode. Which, I gotta say, props to the developers for taking a high-stress game where there's lots of things chasing you around, you need to worry about taking out enemies quick, doing the objectives in time, and saying, what if? What if we gave them a gun that also stressed them out? But as much as I kid, I actually do love it. I love that they added a weapon that is kind of a high skill, high reward type weapon, where if you get really good at using this gun, you're going to get really good results. But I don't think this railgun here needs to make an introduction. You've probably used this. You've probably blown yourself up with it. What I want to really dig into today is, given the current level of technology on Earth here in 2024, is this something we could feasibly build? And we're going to do the math behind that and see how this type of weapon would work. Jimmy. Jimmy, get up. We gotta go. Uh, grandfather. Grandfather, why have you woken me at this hour? What's wrong? It's the bears, Jimmy. They found me. Grandfather, what's a bear? 
God, your father teaches you nothing. We don't have time for this. We gotta go get in the pelican, Jimmy. But grandfather, what about Frankie and Billy? Oh, crap. I forgot you have siblings. Everyone in the pelican. The bears are here. The bears outside. Get the pelican now. Billy, no. Leave him, Jimmy. It's too late for him. So our first step in solving how to make this railgun is defining what exactly a railgun is, because it's not immediately apparent. A railgun, as defined by Merriam-Webster, is an electromagnetic catapult designed to hurl projectiles at extremely high speeds. Now, Merriam-Webster here is hinting at that this launches projectiles extremely fast. That is how a railgun does its damage. There's no explosives in these bullets. It is just a chunk of metal going really, really fast. And how fast is that exactly? Well, according to some of the railguns that the U.S. Navy is testing, that's about 8,200 feet per second. To compare that to a commonly used round, that is about three times as fast as the NATO 556 round, which travels at around 3,000 feet per second. So that leads us to our first problem we want to solve for our Helldivers railgun here. How fast do we want our projectile to go? Now, of course, in-game, the Helldivers doesn't exactly tell us how fast these railgun projectiles go. They just kind of make some fancy gun noises, and then a charger blows up, so... We don't really know, so we're going to take some guesses here. Now, since in fact, handheld railguns do not exist in real life, we're going to have to make some assumptions here. Looking at the Helldiver's railgun, to me, it feels vaguely like the size of a shotgun, meaning we're going to be firing rounds that are similar to the size of a 12-gauge shotgun slug. And if we look at how fast those are typically traveling, we get about 1,500 feet per second. Now, you may be asking yourself, why are we solving for the speed of the projectile first? Shouldn't we be making the railgun and then figure out how fast it goes? Well, an important part of engineering here is actually to determine your criteria first, to take a look at what do we want our thing to do. Now, we want our thing to launch an approximately 12-gauge shotgun-sized slug, one ounce of metal about, at about 4,500 feet per second. Why 4,500 feet per second? Because the other railguns are about triple the normal bullet, so we want this to go about triple the normal shotgun. So, 1,500 up to 4,500 feet per second. Now that we've figured out how fast we want our projectile to go, we know we need it to be handheld. How are we going to actually launch our projectile here? And that is going to require us to look at how a railgun actually works. Now, this is going to into some electronics and magnetics mumbo jumbo that I'm going to do my best here to explain in some fairly simple terms. I'm explaining only in simple terms because, to be honest, I don't understand this beyond the base level myself. But anyways, here we go. So a railgun here operates off two oppositely charged rails, a positive rail and a negative rail. Through these travels a current, which is going to travel through either our conductive projectile or a conductive basket that is going to hold the projectile. Now, why do we need this either conductive projectile or conductive basket between the two rails here? Because if you don't have anything to connect these rails, you just have two magnets sitting in a random gun barrel, which does not help you launch a projectile, actually. Connecting the electricity between these two is what actually causes the projectile to travel down the barrel. This happens because when the current flows through either our magnetic basket or our magnetic projectile itself, it's going to create a magnetic field that is opposite to the two that are being created by the rail. And this is what pushes it out of the barrel at incredibly high speeds. Now, this was an incredibly long-winded way of saying our Helldiver's railgun here is going to need to have two conductive rails in it and either have a conductive projectile or a conductive basket that holds the projectile. Now, if we take a look at the Helldivers railgun in use, obviously things are traveling very fast, so it's tough to see, but I don't see any sort of basket holding the round here as it flies out of the barrel. Again, it's traveling very fast, so we don't know, but I'm going to take a guess and say, especially because this is a smaller weapon shooting a much smaller round than a large railgun, the projectile itself is probably our conductive object, and that's what's pushing it down the barrel. So one thing we need to know next is how long is our barrel? We determined our rails need to be conductive metal, and looking at the gun here and looking at a Helldiver holding it, I'm going to say the total weapon here is about three feet long. So let's say our rails are about two feet long of conductive metal. So what kind of conductive metal are we going to make these rails out of here? We have plenty of options, but I think we're going to keep it simple for this example. We're just going to go with copper. It's a fairly readily available metal. It is softer, so it'll take damage more easily. But let's be honest for a second here. Helldivers tend to just kind of yell for liberty and don't last that long, so... If it takes damage quickly, that doesn't really matter because the Helldivers themselves take damage fairly quickly. So I think copper's our play. And speaking of what type of metals we're going to use here, I did say our projectile needs to be conductive as well. So let's go with that's copper as well. 
because that's going to be copper on the copper rails, which will cause less damage to them since it's the same types of metals, and instead of using a tougher projectile, it's not going to cause as much damage to the gun itself here. Now, the next important part of looking at our Helldivers railgun here is saying, what are we going to make the outer casing out of? Because I just mentioned we have highly conductive rails, highly conductive projectiles. We don't want our Helldiver getting zapped by the internals of this gun. Our best option for the exterior of this gun is honestly probably going to be making it out of some sort of sturdy plastic. Making it out of metal could cause it to be more, you know, electricity conductive, which is not ideal for the user. If we make it out of plastic, however, plastic is a fantastic insulator, and that'll keep our held over here from getting, you know, shocked very painfully. A sturdy plastic here may not hold up quite as well to damage from the outside world, but as I mentioned before, our rails here are going to get damaged somewhat easily and this probably is not a long lasting weapon anyways so i think plastic here is our optimal option because not only will it protect the user to be honest for super earth's advantage here it'll keep it cheap plastic's easy to mold you slap two molds together put some plastic in there boom you're done you throw these finished parts on the table so we've got our rails figured out we've got our outer housing figured out it's time to figure out the heart of the railgun here the power source now, if we take a look at our Helldivers railgun here, you'll see in the back this white cylinder here. I'm going to take a guess and say this is probably the battery, power source, whatever exactly they're using. Now, here is where we start running into some snags with if modern humanity could actually make this type of design. The plastic was easy. We know plastic molding. The metal rails and then the metal projectile, piece of cake. It's just copper. We know what copper is. Now, that power source is going to be a problem, not because of the power it needs to put out, but because of the size. And let me explain why that is with a little math behind this. We're going to take the math for how much power on average one of the large railguns the U.S. Navy was testing uses and scale it down to about the size of this railgun. Because I'm going to be honest with you all here. I tried to learn the calculations for how a railgun operates, and I was going to do all the math myself, figure out what we need for this railgun here, and holy crap is that math hard and I do not understand it. So we're just going to do some simple scaling from big railgun, Small railgun. It's proportional. Don't, don't worry about it. It's definitely proportional. Mr. Mathman, if you can't do the calculations for this, doesn't that make you a pretty bad engineer? T Jimmy, how'd you even get in here? You aren't a part of this world. You're in the Helldivers universe. But you know what? You're not wrong. Shut up. I finished school. Someone hired me. Just go sit in the corner. Oh, OK. Uh, sorry, Jimmy frowns me a little there. Back to our math here. We're going to scale down how much a real railgun that has been tested in real life uses here. So looking at the U.S. Navy's prototype railgun, it used 25 megawatts of power to fire a projectile that was around 23 pounds here. So the first step in our conversion problem here is going to be determining how we're scaling our projectile to the large projectile from the Navy railgun that was tested here. Their projectile is 23 pounds, ours is going to be one ounce. And there is 16 ounces in a pound, so simply we multiply 16 by 23 we get 368 ounces, which means it is 1 over 368 of the weight here. Now, we need this ratio here because we want to scale down our power. This here is about 0.27% of the weight, so we're going to say we need 0.27% of the power that's used. When we multiply our original 25 megawatts by our 0.027% here, we get 0.0675 megawatts. Or if we convert that down to kilowatts, we get 67 kilowatts about. So this here means we're going to need a power source that can reliably generate 67 kilowatts of power in an instant to launch our projectile here. Now, let's take some quick comparisons of some common household energy sources to see exactly how that adds up. The AA battery. The AA battery creates 3.75 watts about. Uh, 67 kilowatts, 3.75 watts. Let's... Let's do a little math here quick, do some division and whatnot, and that is um, 18,000 AA batteries. All right, we're not going to use AA batteries to power this thing. That is just not going to work. So we're not going to be shoving 18,000 AA batteries into the back of our railgun here. That's just not going to work. So let's look at some more energy-dense options here. Maybe the car battery. The car battery is a decent option here. If we look up on Google, that puts up about 4,000 to 8,000 watts of power. Now, the car battery is looking like a much better option because we're getting back into the realm of kilowatts. 4,000, 8,000 watts, you divide that by 1,000, you get 4 to 8 kilowatts, which is nice because we need 67 kilowatts here. So let's say we got an awesome car battery. It's putting out 8,000. It's the best car battery you've ever seen. 
And that, if we divide our 67 by it, is about eight car batteries we need. So car batteries don't become like a more viable option than our 18,000 AA batteries here, because we only need eight. That's a lot better. Is that going to fit into the stock of our railgun? Absolutely not. The hell divers here must be using some super fancy, super advanced battery technology for this that we just do not have on Earth. But we're going through this exercise. Let's see if we can still make this thing work with our, you know, eight car batteries we're trying to use. So we've given up on putting these in the stock of our railgun here. Let's see what happens if we, you know, connected all these eight car batteries together with some duct tape and silly string and say maybe try to put them in a backpack. How much does eight car batteries weigh? Is that something you could feasibly carry if you put these in a backpack and then connected them to the railgun? So do a quick Google search. It looks like the average car battery here is between 25 and 30 pounds, it's looking like. And that's pretty hefty. It's looking not too good for our railgun here, because if you multiply that by even just the 25 by eight, that's 200 pounds of battery. Could you put that in a backpack? Yes. Could any average person carry that for any length of time? No, absolutely not. So I'm going to go ahead and say it. This little white cylinder in the back of the railgun here has got to be some kind of hell divers voodoo magic battery that is just incredible and it just leagues beyond anything we have on Earth right now. Because right now it's looking like we're going to need 200 pounds of car battery to make this thing work. So that being said, I'm going to get to my final answer here. I'm going to say using modern technology... Could you make the Helldivers Railgun? You could not make it portable like in Helldivers and easily handheld. You could make a railgun such as this if it was only a stationary weapon. Put this thing on a stand, keep it in a bunker, keep all those batteries nearby. It could probably work. You could probably actually make this thing work. But making a handheld like you have in Helldivers? No, I don't think it can happen using modern technology, unfortunately. So I want to say thank you all for tuning in. Hopefully you've enjoyed this breakdown here of the railgun and if it would be possible. And if you did, I'd love you to hit that like button down below and consider hitting that subscribe button if you're looking for more content like this. Thanks, and I'll see you guys next time. Does, does anyone know how to take care of a human child? I want to play with the railguns. Oh, no, you don't, Billy.